Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. So today's Sunday afternoon and it's about to get dark which is why I'm quickly trying to film this video while it's light. Um, I was, I, I've been just applying for jobs and trying to fix my CV and I've just been thinking about what I'm going to do next when I finish this PhD this academic year. And I was just thinking that this was a time that I was thinking about applying for a master's and applying for a PhD and I was thinking about how I'm going to fund it. Um, so I know that a lot of people ask a lot of questions about how to fund a PhD and how to fund a master's and a lot of you just don't know so I thought it'd be interesting to show you guys different ways that you can search for funding and I've compiled a list here and hopefully this would help for anyone that's wanting to fund their postgraduate studies because I know how hard it is it's not easy especially you know you graduate and you want to get a job and you want to start saving money and to have to fund more studies for another four five six years it's it's not a joke so i hope this will help you guys i'm going to go through on the screen with you so either i'm going to shift myself to the side and i'm going to record my screen or you'll just see a screen from now <laughs> okay so the first way is by searching findaphd.com now this is the way that i found my phd so i highly recommend it because this is how i got my phd um, if let's say you could find a PhD by subject, I forgot to search, not all, <laughs> London, only one <want> London, <laughs> okay, um, let's see what it looks like, oh, this looks really interesting, okay, deciphering the function of blood vessels in skeletal aging, so looking at how blood vessels uh, change um, in aging of your skeleton, so let's click on that, and that one looks like it's an imperial, so that's an amazing university um, and this is a description so it tells you all about the PhD and it also tells you that this is a project that is funded for students worldwide which means that if you are from anywhere in the world you can get funded on this project so that's great stuff so, yeah you can select I'm a UK student and you can get funding if you're a UK student or you can select I am uh, international self-funded which means you're paying for yourself don't do that. <laughs> and then if you're interested in this project, just send an email or pre click on apply online and then go ahead with that. Now, the other way is findamasters.com. Um, so again, you can find a masters and you do the same thing. Number two is to actually make prospective um, applications to specific researchers that you're interested in. So what you could do is let's just say, for example, Let's go back to Google. Um, let's just go to King's, oh, King's College Math School, <laughs> College of London. And let's go to, I don't know, let's take a little search. Say for example, we're interested in cardiovascular, the cardiovascular um, section of research. So here, if you go to people and then go to academic staff, you will have a list of all the academic staff in that division. So in the division of um, cardiovascular research. So then let's say for example, you wanna to go to this person. Um, he's a professor in molecular cardiology and his email is here and you can see what he's interested in and what his research interests are also in. And sometimes they even say um, that they have uh, openings for PhD students or for master's students and Sometimes the only way you can find them is by looking on their actual personal uh, sites like this. So literally just scrolling through them. Let's go to John. Um, so here, this guy, here, this, these, these are his research interests and that's what he's. So then if, for example, you think that you absolutely love his work, you drop him an email and you tell him why you love his work and you tell him what your interests are and what you're doing and you just, just ask, do you have any funding or a PhD student in the coming year and you will get a yes or you'll get a no you have you have nothing to lose by doing that and most jobs are not advertised that's something that work that's something that's true in any field that you'll probably ever can go into um the next way is by actually looking in the funding section of university websites so let's stick with this one that we're looking at right now so if you go here to PhD opportunities they actually tell you what opportunities they have for PhD students and these would all be funded by the way. The BHF have a three year um, 
uh, PhD studentship and they also have a four year one. So the four year one would be a master's plus a PhD and the three year one would be if you already have a master's. So the dates must have a first or a good to one and then it tells you funding. So this one they pay you £22,000 a year. Now that is not taxed, okay? So that's like earning £26,000, £27,000 a year which is more than most professions get in their first, you know, when you first graduate. So that's really good. Um, and again, it's not taxed. So that's really, really, really good. The other one is um, for the four-year program. So it's for uh, it's for a master's and a PhD. Now the master's will be funded and the PhD will be funded as well, and you'll be getting paid for both of them. So here you can see that um, the yeah. So usually for this, in your first year, you'll do like three projects or something. I don't know how this one works but you'll do two or three projects and then you'll choose out of those three which one you want to continue for your PhD um so I think it's really cool um it's really competitive by the way so by the way if you for example here if you go to PhD opportunities that will show you all the opportunities um and find out more about it so okay fine this was a really, really good like page that I was looking at so much when I was applying for my PhD um, and for my master's as well. So here, this this is all the PhD student opportunities at this. So I'm looking at King's College London by the way at the moment just because I went there and I, I'm able to browse their site quite easily. But this would be the case for any any university. So here you can see that they've got all the different titles of um, different PhD programs and. Um, what division of research they're in, so are they cell development, are they um, neuroscience, blah blah and then it tells you who the supervisors are um, and how they're sponsored, so how you'll be funded these are all funded by the way and they also tell you who's eligible, so um, here this one for example is home and EU students and this one is also overseas students, so it depends what you are and then it tells you when the deadline is as well, which is really important to know so here you can see all these projects are available for people to apply for so that's another way to find funding. Literally go on the university website and look at PH the PhD funding section. Another way is, let's say this may or may not, I don't know if this is true for a PhD, but definitely for a master's. I know that some employers actually fund their master's for their employees, depending on whether or not it's going to benefit um, the company in any way, or if it's going to make, you know, better you in the workplace. So. Definitely look into that. Um, I don't know much about this because I've never actually, I didn't, well, I, I didn't go <laughs> through that route, but some jobs do fund part-time masters and part-time PhDs um, if they see, if they deem it to be useful enough for their um, employees. So if you are in a job and you have started your career and you think to yourself, you know what, I would love to do a masters part-time um, and you can justify that, then I would definitely bring that up with my employer. Um, and see what he or she says about it and see whether or not he or she will fund you because if actually it's going to be a good thing for you to get that master's or PhD then more than likely um, your employer will fund it for you. The last way that I would uh, recommend searching for funding is, well this is not really going to be fully funded but it, it's a master's student loan so this is only, I guess, relevant for UK students. Um, in the UK, we have a student loans company that we use for undergraduate study. And I believe this year, or maybe last year, I'm not sure, they opened it up for masters. I put that at the bottom of the list because if you're looking for funding, you're obviously not going to want to get a student loan. But if, you know, if the worst comes to worst and you still want to do a master's, I wouldn't say to put it off just because you don't have enough money. So I'll definitely say number five would be to get a student loan. I hope that that helped. Um, this is exactly how I got my PhD and how I got funding for mine. If you have any questions about anything, do feel free to send me a message um, or send me an email. Uh, I believe it's I'm in a place at gmail.com, but do check my description box below. And do let me know what um, if you have any questions about anything to do with applications or how to approach <laughs> these situations with, you know, with the different... <laughs> it's getting dark. Perfect. Um, so yeah, I would highly recommend doing that. It's getting really dark now, so I'm going to sign out and um, I will speak to you guys soon, hopefully. Bye!